Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. Once again, we appreciate you being here. Uh, of course, myself and my business partner, Art Kirsch, are with the famous Dr. Liz Lister. Dr. Liz, it's so good to see you. We love your practical medical advice. Hi, Liz. Thank you. Hi, good morning, gentlemen. Lovely to see you both. So I have a question for you because uh, we've discussed this in, 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 in a part uh, before uh, a couple of times, but about, um, I'm going to say 25 years ago, uh, I was impressed by a, uh, a cover photo on the Sunday New York Times Magazine of a woman who was posing with uh, uh, the scars of a breast that had been removed because of breast cancer. Uh, she's a model named Matushka, and uh, I actually had the good fortune of meeting her uh, about seven years ago on a trip to California, we spent a day together. We've been in touch for a while. And she always impressed me as probably the person who uh, brought uh, breast uh, or chest disease or that disease uh, so that you could begin to talk about it. And uh, therefore, a lot of people can do a lot of things down. And uh, I don't think there's one of us who doesn't know somebody uh, uh, as a friend of, uh, that's had breast cancer. Dozens of people who, oh, yeah, and I went and I had... Uh, a breast removed or I had a, a lump uh, removed or uh, all those kinds of things. We've had a close business associate of ours uh, uh, who uh, in the age, in her 40s uh, decided that because she had that BRCA gene or something to remove both her breasts. But so there's so many therapies out today, it doesn't seem as if that's the first choice anymore. Uh, can you explain a little bit more about um, what the state of the art is uh, today mm -hmm. as it as opposed to even as recently as 25 years ago? Oh yeah, absolutely. There's been so many advances in the area of treating, diagnosing and treating breast cancer. You're absolutely right. Women don't have to resort to major surgery a lot of the time now. Uh, there's, there's a lot to say to answer your question. Uh, let me start by saying that there's a statistic out there that one in eight women will develop breast cancer in her lifetime. And that's about 12 and a half percent. That's pretty, that's a very high percentage, which sounds really scary. However, if you break it down decade by decade, it never goes above about 4% actually. All right, so women can be a little bit less afraid. And nowadays with media, the way it promotes and sends information a little bit too quickly for people to process, uh, it can seem really, really frightening. So that's that's number one. Number two, the vast majority of cancers, uh, breast cancer is diagnosed in stage one, of which 95%, well, I think it's actually even higher than that, but upwards of 95% of women are going to survive this diagnosis. Well, that's very encouraging. So, um, uh, but there's a lot of things that people can do to... Uh, uh, if not prevented, uh, to be in the best possible condition they can. And uh, that's uh, a part of your practice, is it not? Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly right. Uh, lots of controversy over hormone replenishment therapy for whether it causes breast cancer. So I trained in my residency training in the early 90s, and we lamented that more women weren't on hormone replacement therapy at that time. Then in 2003, the Women's Health Initiative came out and blew a big giant hole in that whole discussion because it showed a trend towards more incidents, a higher incidence of breast cancer in women who were using hormones. However, I, I knew even at the time, can I tell the story? Do we have time for me to tell the story? Sure. Absolutely. I was, I was, it was 2003. I was uh, trying to sell a house that I was living in. And my realtor walked in and she just plopped onto the couch, beat red, dripping sweat. And I knew what had happened because I knew the headlines. And she confirmed that she said, my doctor took me off of my hormones and she was really suffering. And I knew that that was not the right way to proceed. So it took a little while to unravel the details. But what we now know is that that study the women who exhibited the higher 
incidence of breast cancer, a trend towards it, actually were using a progestin, which is not progesterone. Women naturally have progesterone, but this was not progesterone, it was a progestin. And we actually had animal studies before then that showed that this progestin can lead to breast cancer in primate studies. And then now we had it in women. We had this evidence in women. But unfortunately, it made doctors and women alike think that they have to go off all of their hormones, which was not actually the case. So today, what's different? Uh, if you, if you, do you avoid the progestin and yes. use progesterone? Correct. That's exactly right. There's a word that a lot of doctors still react to, which is so unfortunate. The word is bioidentical. Bioidentical just, it started, it did start out as a marketing term. And that's why it got immediately under doctors' skin way back when all that was happening, all close to 20 years ago. Okay. But bioidentical, all it means is that the hormone is either the same or almost exactly the same as what the body naturally produces. So that's exactly right, John. We need bioidentical progesterone instead of progestin. That's one very important factor. And the other is that the women in the study who were on, they were on an oral estrogen, which is not good. We've talked about that before. Mm. An oral estrogen, we don't want that. We want the estrogen to go through the skin. Okay. And we now know that. We now have multiple humongous studies. That was 2003. 2007 was a huge study out of Europe. We've had other large studies here in the U.S. ever since then that confirm that all, what we need in order to eliminate that increased tendency towards breast cancer is to use bioidentical progesterone instead of a progestin. So now with the state of the art today, uh, fast forwarding today, and your practice of the uh, certainly, yes. your specialty in uh, hormone replacement is what, uh, about 10 years? Uh, uh, about, at this 13, point, yeah. 13. So yes. if you had a, a, a patient who came in and uh, was concerned about this or as part of your workup on them, what, uh, what do you generally talk to them about in the area of uh, being in the best shape for uh, fighting off or not getting uh, uh, breast cancer? Uh, or is it just Two part things. of that, a full mix of, of, uh, of uh, therapy that you provide? Well, yes, it's important to have all the hormones balanced because that's how our bodies fight cancer anyhow. Our, our cells are always developing cancer. There's always the cell in our body that's becoming cancerous, and our normal immune system usually takes care of it. So there's everything that we do to stay healthy in general, healthy mindset, good, good sleep, uh, good hormone balance, all the things that you and I, that we've all talked about are very essential to keeping away what people call the big C when nobody wants that. We're all concerned about that. All, all women are worried about breast cancer. Even myself with everything that I know, still I get that little moment of nerves when I go to have my mammogram, right? So staying in the best shape, we can talk just, we can touch right now on the role of estrogen in preventing breast cancer. Yes, you heard me right. I know that that's the opposite of what most women and doctors think. However, the other important piece, well, one other important item that we learned from the Women's Health Initiative study was that the women who continued in the study, they stopped the arm of the study where the women were on the estrogen and the progestin and they continued the other arm. These women had had hysterectomy, so they were only on the estrogen. And about two to three years later, they published data that showed that these women taking estrogen had less incidence of breast cancer than the women who were getting the placebos. Wow, wow. This really was shocking, but it made no splash whatsoever because this was deep into the concern about it. People were still remembering the initial impact of the initial headlines. And there were other problems because the estrogen was oral instead of through the skin. It was by mouth instead of through the skin. And that was causing a whole other set of issues that obscured that incredible piece of information that women on estrogen were getting less breast cancer than the women not on estrogen. 
And they were also living longer, less hip fractures, less heart disease. They were just a lower mortality across the board. Wow. So you mentioned several yeah. times a woman's health study. Uh, yes. Can you t talk a little bit more about that? And do you have any information on your website uh, about the study or a link to that? Absolutely. Yeah, mostly I talk about that a lot in both of the books that I've written. The Women's Health Initiative, the WHI study, it's, it's known to most doctors at this point, even though it's already coming up on 17, 18 years old from when they initially published data. It was such a big investment that they're still mining it for data and information, which is so unfortunate because it has led women away from hormone replenishment that can help them feel better, think better, and avoid breast cancer. Now, Dr. Liz, with a younger woman who hasn't reached uh, menopause, where um, the hormones ordinarily would not be a problem, if they develop breast cancer, does all this also apply? All of this definitely applies. The, in the WHI, the women were all, average age were in their 60s. So you are wow. absolutely, we're not, we're talking about, that's a different group of women. Below age 50 is where it gets more difficult. It's a more challenging diagnosis. It can be more challenging to treat. To answer a little bit more to the state of the art, we there's so much that they do now checking the actual breast cancer tissue itself. They don't just check it for hormone receptors now. They're checking for different uh, nuclear features, okay, genetic features of the tumor itself and tailoring all kinds of treatments are now available. And it's definitely a higher incidence of the gene mutation in younger women. There's a lot more to it. Under yeah. age so well, what, should, what should a woman look for if all of a sudden they've got a lump or uh, they think they've got cancer in talking to their doctor? Because you, you know, the, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of doctors out there and some subscribe to different uh, remedies and others. What should they look for uh, to be a good caretaker of their own body when, they, when talking to their doctor about cancer and hormones? That's a wonderful question. Lo most doctors, I think, do a good job recommending the screening guidelines. What I, I and I have a lot of women concerned about mammograms, uh, that's a whole other topic we could do, and I can bring more actual data for us. However, the radiation in a mammogram is truly minimal, and let me just say that from age 50 and better and upward from there, mammograms definitely save lives. You're talking about feeling a lump. It's actually probably more common for a very early treatable cancer to be found on a mammogram. That's how my mom's breast cancer was detected. She was 68 years old, which is the peak age of breast cancer. And it was found on the mammogram. It was found early. She was treated and essentially cured. Uh, most of us doctors don't like to use the word cure in the same paragraph talking about cancer, but it's, <laughs> but still, uh, Knock on wood, that's most likely what we are talking about there. Okay. And I also want to give a shout out to vitamin D. Mm. Vitamin D kills cancer. Higher levels of vitamin D are associated with lower incidence of breast cancer in women, prostate cancer in men, heart disease in women and men, all kinds of illnesses. And the more I learn, I am telling you, it's absolutely incredible what vitamin D does to help the immune system in particular to help avoid breast cancer for women. So wow. I, think, I think that that's a perfect lead into uh, another topic we should discuss uh, on its own, which is vitamin D. And, uh, but this has been a brilliant conversation. I, I, I think that will be uh, help inform a lot of uh, uh, men and women, because I, men get breast cancer as well, uh, as I understand, but it's it's not that frequent. Uh, but right. uh, but particularly for uh, the women in our audience, um, I, uh, there'll be a, a lower third uh, indicating the name of your website as well as in the information below uh, the video. 
So uh, if you have any questions, go visit uh, Dr. Liz and um, uh, get more information. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Dr. Liz, great Thank stuff. You. We really appreciate it. I just want to remind everybody to go to your website. Yeah. And, oh, oh, okay, uh, why, don't, why don't we give that the name of the website again so we can do a nice clean lower third here. The name of your website is? Is drlizmd.com, D-R-L-I-Z-M-D.com. Perfect. Good. See you soon, Dr. Liz. See you. Wonderful. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.